Hello to everyone. My name is Ignacio Gargiulo. I am an assistant researcher in the Institute of Astrophysics in La Plata, currently actively collaborating with the Galaxy Formation Group in the University of La Serena in Chile, with Antonella Monachesi and Facundo Gomez, and many others from the Auriga and Illustris TNG collaborations. Uh, today, I'm going to talk mainly about the origin of the properties of photometric bulges from the perspective of high resolution cosmological hydrodynamical simulations. In particular, I'll be showing what we have learned about the origin of high and low Celsius index bulges and how they are related to different formation pathways. So to get started, uh, as you all probably know, when we talk about photometric bulges, we assume that the radial surface brightness profile of this galaxy can be decomposed in a linear combination of individual components or structures. The bulge is usually represented by a Celsius profile, while the disk is represented by an exponential profile. Using uh, two component decompositions in high resolution images of nearby galaxies, uh, Fisher and Drury show that the distribution of the uh, main parameter of the Celsius function, which is the Celsius index, is bimodal. We can see this, for example, in a compilation of Celsius indices from 308 galaxies from 2016. They also found that the majority of bulges morphologically classified as classical have a Celsius index larger than two, and those classified as pseudo bulges have a Celsius index lower than two. As you are an expert audience, I will not enter in details about the bulge morphological classification, but the existence of different types of bulges and a broad distribution of Celsius indices is an indication of, of different uh, formation pathways. So our main interest was to understand how photometric bulges grow and end up being more or less concentrated. And we are interested in particular in galaxies similar to the Milky Way and M31 to put our galaxy and the local group in a broader picture. So to this end, we used some of the state-of-the-art cosmological hydrodynamic simulations that we have access to. And this diagram on the left shows the baryonic mass element resolution in the y-axis as a function of the number of resolved galaxies above a given mass, which is indicative of the size of the simulation, basically. In the top left plot, uh, part of the plot, we can find the resimulation regime or zoom regime with smaller samples of uh, resimulated galaxies with large resolutions. While going to the right, we can find the cosmological volumes for which resolution becomes more expensive. Uh, in 2019, we studied the bulges of 30 simulated Milky Way mass galaxies of the Auriga collaboration and found that their properties were more akin to pseudo bulges. All the Celsius indices coming from photometric decompositions were lower than two. So recently, we used the TNG50 simulation, which is a cosmological box of uh, 50 common megaparsecs and was run with the same code at EPO, having only a few changes in the physical model. This allowed us to multiply by 10 the size of the sample, assigning only a factor of two in resolution. I'll be showing mostly the result of this last work today. So we select Milky Way and m one like galaxies in the mass range indicated in this slide that have this morphology. This kinesis is quantified by the minor to major axis ratio of the stellar moment of inertial tensor. We got uh, 287 galaxies in our sample with the mass distribution shown in the plot. And the colored arrows show stellar mass estimates of the Milky Way and M31 from different authors. So here's a bunch uh, of the whole sample of galaxies, but we can notice that the large diversity of galaxies with many detailed features due to the resolution power of the simulation. Also, the nine galaxies in the left uh, are ordered by Celsius index from top left to bottom right, showing a clear uh, morphological trend. Uh, our first step was to decompose the software flying profiles in the visual band of all the galaxies in our sample, masking features that are not part of the disk or batch components like bars or strong spiral arms. Well, this plot uh, showcases the diversity of surface brightness profile we found. Around 17% of the fitted bulges have Celsius indices larger than two, and the distribution of Celsius indices shows no binodality, but more a tail of high Celsius values. Every time you see a red, a red and gray and the plots from now on, it means that the high and low Celsius index respectively. So we also characterized the photometric bulges by the bulge to total ratio, the distribution we got is skewed towards lower values of bulge to total, uh, but what drives the formation of different types of photometric bulges. Uh, it is usually suggested in the literature that bulge type might depend on the environment where galaxies reside. So we tested this hypothesis in TNG50 using two different indicators. The first one measures the over density, where P is the volumetric density of galaxies defined this way, and here K is the number of neighbors considered. P median is the median value of a monometric density for all the galaxies in the Mars range considered. We vary the number of neighbors K and the mass, limited, uh, the mass limit to count neighbors and find no dependence of the Celsius index of bulges with the over density values where galaxies reside. 
the median V over T ratio uh, shows a very mild positive correlation. As a second test, uh, we simply counted the number of neighboring galaxies inside a fixed sphere of 500 megaparsec over H centered in each simulated galaxy of our sample, and found no correlation of Cersei index with this measure of density. So moving forward, uh, one of the bulge formation pathways that is always pointed out, in particular to explain the formation of concentrated bulges, are galactic mergers. We explore different aspects of mergers to understand how these are correlated with the Celsius index of the galaxies in our sample, and we define the significant merger as those with a total mass ratio larger than 10%. In the right panel, we show uh, the Celsius index of bulges as a function of the number of significant mergers and as a function of the total accreted mass in mergers, we can see that the plain number of mergers and the total accreted mass in mergers shows no correlation with the Celsius index. In the left panel, we show the Celsius index as a function of the gas fraction of the host at the time of the last significant merger. Color coding corresponds to the look back time of the last significant merger, and the size of the bubbles show the total mass uh, of the accreted satellite. So we can see that the last significant gas rich early mergers are exclusive of galaxies with low Celsius index here. But the, neither the gas fraction or the host or the total mass of the last significant merger play a remarkable role in the present day Celsius index of photometric bulges. Of all the aspects regarding merger that we explore, the one that most affects the present day concentration or Celsius index in photometric bulges is the timing of mergers. We are seeing here the Celsius index of bulges uh, as, uh, from our sample as a function of the look back time of the last significant merger suffered by the galaxy. In the upper panel, we see the distribution of look back times for each uh, type of bulge. Galaxies with high Celsius index experience the last significant merger on average uh, later with respect to galaxies with low Celsius indices. So our interpretation is that late measures are more likely to induce recognizable perturbations on the host's present day stellar kinematics than an early event since secular processes have less time to act and reconfigure the galactic space phase distribution. So to further investigate the effect of mergers, we extend our analysis to other definition of algae. Simulations give us a wealth of information about the stellar particles, so we are also interested in the origin of kinematically defined bulges and how these relate with the properties of photometric bulges. We define the kinematic bulges with, an with a usual definition among simulators. First, we separate uh, stellar particles that have circular or near to circular orbits, which we consider part of the disk, from the rest by means of the circularity parameter. For each particle, we divide the um, angular momentum component perpendicular to the disk with the angular momentum of the particle with the same energy, but in circular orbit. This is a typical distribution of circularity for a simulated disk galaxy, and we establish a, a threshold of 0.7. And secondly, we establish a spatial cut around the central region of the galaxy, so all stellar particles inside two effective radii with circularities below 0.7 are considered to belong to the kinematic patch. But we always have to keep in mind that photometric and kinematic bulges are not the same thing. In fact, we computed the B over total radio using both definition of our TNG50 sample, and we can see that they do not correlate well as expected. The most important use of this definition is that it allows us uh, to find which of these bulge particles formed in C2 and which formed ex C2. We consider all stars formed in the main progenitor branch as in C2, meaning that ex C2 stars are formed in satellite galaxy, but basically. We show in our work in 2019 with the Aurea galaxies that most stars in the kinematic bulge were formed in situ. And in the left panels, we see that the distribution of ex situ fractions in the kinematic bulges of galaxies in our sample in TNG50 compared to the distribution of ex situ fractions in the bulges of the Aurea samples. And so we confirmed that prevalence of in situ formation of kinematic bulges with TNG50. And we applied a two sample Kolmogorov Smirnov test to see if both distribution can be considered equivalent and found. Uh, that they cannot. TNG50 shows an excess of galaxies with high fraction of exitu stars with respect to Auriga. The main reason for this may be the change in the HEM feedback implementation in TNG50, which has a uh, more efficiently to prevent the formation of stars near the galactic center. Uh, an interesting result emerges when we look into the Cersic index of photometric bulges as a function of the fraction of exitu stars in the kinematic bulge. We can see that there is no linear correlation. The Pearson coefficient that we compute is too low to claim that. But galaxies with high Cersic uh, photometric bulges have on average a higher fraction of exitu stars in the kinematic bulge. This is another way to see the impact of mergers in shaping the inner superfine profile. 
So we also can see how many satellites are responsible for building this ex situ component in kinematic bulges. And we found that only one satellite is in general enough to explain uh, the majority of stars, 50%, and a low number of satellites are enough to explain the totality of them. The obvious question is, what is so special about these measures that populate with stars the inner regions of galaxies? Because obvious suspects like mass ratio or satellite mass are not the answer. We are working on this, among other things, with simulations with higher temporal resolution to follow the orbit of satellites more accurately. So the last but not less important aspect that we studied was the impact of bars in the formation of photometric bulges. We compute the strength of bars by means of Fourier mode analysis in a pretty conventional way. We define radial annually in the phase of projection of galaxies and compute the complex Fourier coefficients to quantify the asymmetrical patterns in the mass distributions with n-fold symmetries. And the second mode correspond to a bisymmetric signal, such as a bar, and we use the bar phase angle to determine when the bar ends and the spiral structure begins. So the bar strength is finally the mass weighted mean of the amplitude of the M equal to Fourier mode within the bar region. And to test the effect of bars on the buildup of, of photometric bulge types, we looked into the cumulative fraction of galaxies with bars stronger than a given amplitude value for galaxies with high and low Sarsic index at present in the top panel, and for galaxies with different bulge to total radius at, the, uh, at present in the lower panels. So there is a clear excess of noticeable bars stronger than 0 0.5, uh, 0 0.15 in galaxies with a low Sarsic index at present since uh, redshift two at least, reaching a difference of 28% at redshift 0.5. So in the lower panels, we see that across all redshifts and bar strengths considered, galaxies with higher values of bulge to total radio show a greater fraction of bars than galaxies with less luminous bulge. Uh, but the causality can be interpreted in two ways here. In the first one, bars contribute to build up preferentially low Sarsic photometric bulges. There are several mechanisms known to do that. The bar exerts torques to the gas that infos towards the center of the galaxy or stars already formed whose orbits are reshaped, low angular momentum near resonances and dry uh, are driven uh, towards the center. But this can also be interpreted as concentrated bulges preventing the formation of bars. Uh, this is also known to happen from stellar dynamics. It is explained as stopping the feedback in the swing amplifier and feedback loop process, but uh, are, there are several results with numerical simulations also. Uh, so you can see some recent ones in Qataria and Das 2018 and Zaha and Almegrin 2018. It is probably not one or the other. Uh, probably both effects uh, are concomitant or acting with different strengths in different galaxies. So another way to see the impact of bars in the formation of different, different photometric bulge types is to try to see the integrated effect of a bar. So long-lived bars would have a more noticeable effect on photometric bulge formation than short lived bars. So we define, define the duration of a strong bar as the amount of time that a galaxy had a bar with a bar strength larger than 0.2. In the left panels, we show the Cersic index and bulge to total radio of galaxies in our samples as a function of the duration of the bar. Color coded are the ex situ fractions in the kinematic bulge. Also, there is no correlation between the Cersic index and bulge to total with the duration of the bar, it is interesting to see how these galaxies populate uh, this diagram. So we see that galaxies with high Sarsic index bulge typically do not develop strong bars during most of their evolution. There is a, a group of galaxies with high Sarsic bulges that developed a bar during more than three giga years in their history. Some of them with Sarsic index close to the threshold imposed to divide uh, them into low and high Sarsic index bulges. And most of the bulges with long-lived bars show either low or negligible ex situ fractions in the kinematic bulge, as well uh, as low Cersic bulges. Galaxies with short-lived bars, on the other hand, show both low and high Cersic index bulges. In the right panel, we show a synthesis of, of what we found when we relate the fraction of ex situ stars with the duration of the bar. We can see two clear branches in this plot. Uh, clearly, strong bars mainly develop and prevail in the simulated galaxies with low to moderate uh, ex situ fractions. So finally, to respond to the question that was proposed by the SOC, what does all of this tell us about bulge formation and evolution? 
I think that the most important insights that we got from our work are the following, and I leave it here. Uh, also, a general opinion: there is a huge diversity of pulses in Milky Way and M31-like galaxies, and the connection between photometric bulge type and the formation pathways is not straightforward. Fitting all of them in only two categories from a theoretical point of view uh, is increasingly difficult. So, thanks to the talk for giving me the opportunity to present this talk, and bye to all.